Wagiru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wagiru Ji Ki Fate. My name is Jocelyn Kaur, and I'm a trans creator on the Guru Granth Sahib project. We're excited to announce the release of Sad Bani. So, this is a composition describing the witnessing of Baba Sundar, the great grandson of Guru Amr Das Sahib, during the Guru's departure from the earthly realm. So the stanzas contain both historical accounts and also larger messages on grieving, death, and remembrance. The word sad itself refers to a call, an invitation, or an invocation. Um, and it also refers to a poetic form associated in Punjabi culture with death and also with marriage. Um, so these six stanzas explore this theme of death and its complex emotions. Um, by redirecting us toward deep love of the one and uh, an effort made in Sangat um, towards devotion to that one. Sad is set in the rag or musical mode of Ramkali. Ramkali, as you might remember, is used to evoke feelings of triumph regardless of circumstance and also like these two kind of moods of sweetness and also maybe like a stark message. So you'll see when you look through these stanzas that some of the lines end with the word jiyo, which coats them in a kind of tenderness, even as the message might be harder for us to internalize, because we are being asked to kind of like change our understanding of death, uh, which is not easy. So all that being said, I wanted to start with a couple of lines that have stuck out to me. Um, in stanza four, uh, Baba Sundar begins with, Satgur paane apne, Excuse my pronunciation. Uh, the English translation is the true Guru Amr Das, in accordance with his will, having sat, summoned the family and said, lest anyone cry after me, that person will not be pleasing to me at all, or that will not be pleasing to me at all. And I think when I first read this, I it was hard for me to hear. It was hard for me to internalize because... I just am thinking back to the way that it feels when you're in the midst of your grief and the kind of roller coaster of emotions of witnessing the departure of a loved one. And so I really had to place it in context of like what the larger theme of this composition is in my understanding. And that is like not just acceptance of the command, but celebration and joy. And so a word that I think helps us understand that that's significant in this composition is the word sabas which is like bravo or wow or great or congratulations and you hear that when you're a kid like maybe you do something for the first time properly or like you do something that you previously weren't able to do and you might hear your parent or grandparent say like shabash you did it um and so this word is invoked in stanzas two and three but in the context of ikunkar congratulating the guru for their acceptance of the command and for their joyous acceptance of the command and so we're really being asked to reframe our understanding of death as like a fulfillment of the command of the one and if we are to accept that joyfully then that's a thing worth celebrating um, and so if i think about all that and return to stanza four the Guru says, following those two lines, if a friend is enrobed with honor, their companion rejoices, to whom the honor of the friend is pleasing. So whenever we see our friend being honored, we're going to like light up because we're excited for them. So the Guru is saying like this, this act of departing itself is part of the command and is itself an honor. And so I'm asking you, my sons, my children, my brothers, my six, my Sangat, to really contemplate this and understand that your eternal guru is being enrobed with honor, is sort of draped in honor. And I think that recontextualization adds that kind of tenderness back into the line that maybe we lose in the English of like, this is my sincere wish or my hope is that you don't cry after me, that you don't you know, hire people to do their public displays of grief like we have seen in the kind of cultural context of that time. And instead, spend your time praising the one, glorifying the one. Don't worry about how you are honoring me as the deceased. Spend time cheerfully and joyously accepting this command and continuing to cultivate devotion to the one through praise, through remembrance, through identification. This is a thing to be celebrated, a great honor as we return to the light from which we came. So I'm understanding this composition then 
which maybe yes is about death and mourning, as really uh, an urging towards celebration and joy, and an urging towards the continued effort towards cultivating devotion, um, and towards w- wisdom orientedness in that community, in that sangat, who can show us the wisdom. So I'm just, you know, I'm thinking about what that looks like for me, reflecting on my relationship with the command, um, with death, with understanding death as kind of an act of honoring the command. Um, and and maybe as hard as it is to think about, thinking about what it would look like for me to be joyful in that acceptance, in that singing and in that praise. So I hope you all spend some time with this. And as usual, there are word definitions and footnotes and transgressions and commentary for you to explore um, and see what what urging you feel towards reframing your relationship with both the command and with death as, you know, maybe this thing that causes a lot of fear, uh, but is itself part of that sort of beautiful uh, command and, and beautiful acceptance of the command. Why Guruji ka khalsa? Why Guruji ki fateh?